Yo, welcome back to another episode here from the Off Grid Garage in rainy Australia. It is raining again. Well, the good news is though, the warehouse just rang and said my shelving for my battery has arrived and I can pick it up. Well, the bad news again is we are still in a lockdown situation here. So we are only allowed to go for grocery shopping, which is not quite picking up a shelf, right? But the very good news is this lockdown is over in half an hour. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for another half an hour so it stops raining. And then we go and pick up our shelf. See you later, thank you. No way! What? Hey, this guy again. Anto from New Orleans has sent me another parcel and it is soft. <laughs> no way! <laughs> and my logo man that is amazing thank you so much for that look at this i can make really good videos now that is so cool thank you so much again for sending another t-shirt well if you don't know ante has sent me a t-shirt before that was in in uh, 2019 well this one here this one this is what he made for me as well and I had Bill from Canada just asking where we can get these awesome t-shirts here because he likes this one. And I told him just give us another two, three, four weeks and we will have t-shirts for all of you guys. Man, but until then I cannot decide if this one here or better this one here. I like this one. This is really good. Well, thank you again, Anto from New Orleans for sending me this amazing t-shirt. That is so cool. Thank you very much. Wow. Okay, let me explain what is going to happen here. Well, you must be thinking Andy is going crazy now. He's buying a garage shelf to um, store his battery. And then he connects this all to solar and his inverter and runs it from a warehouse shelf. Well, yeah, it looks like a warehouse shelf, right? At the moment it does. Okay, um, let me pitch this idea to you. There's no excuse to not wearing this. I know a lot of you people have suggested to um, have a look at server racks to host the batteries. 
Well, I did. Unfortunately, I cannot get any in this area here which would, would be suitable. Most of them are too small to host one battery on one level. And if they can, they don't have the capability of carrying 16 um, batteries on, on one level. So I would have to split them up in two levels and this would just be messy with the cabling and everything. And I looked at new ones as well and they are like 16 to $1,800. And the used ones most of the time don't come with any side panels or as I said, they were not right. And someone suggested to have a look at these uh, truck crates, like these toolboxes some of the trucks have, made out of stainless steel or aluminium. They are actually not too bad and they are really spacious, so I, could, so I could easily fit 32 cells inside such a crate. The footprint of these crates is fairly large and I don't have much space in this area here. The whole area this crate occupies is fairly large and I cannot utilize anything above this crate then. It's a bit like with this box we built here in the first place, you know. It, it was good, but the, the space above is pretty wasted. So I looked around and thought, well, I need to get something with a small footprint, which is high, but is very narrow. So it will fit in between the metal beam there and the electrical cabinet, just in this gap. Well, I had a look online and found this nice shelf here at my warehouse store. It is like a construction set, so you can build them up as you, know, as you go, as you need them. They come in all sides of length, from one meter to 2.3 meters high, and all kind of width. And this one here seemed to be perfect because, yeah, it fits these battery cells perfectly. And here at the front, I also have enough space for a BMS and all the other stuff. And yesterday I played around with the um, shelf height here. I tried to put it as low as possible, but if I go one notch lower here, we have only 50 mil in between the batteries and this beam here. I can get underneath, but it's very hard to work on it. So I said, okay, well, the shelf is only capable of taking three batteries all in total then until it's full. I've got a company nearby here, which will make me aluminum sheets now to cover this whole shelf completely from all sides. It will be a fully closed enclosure for the battery storage. The front panels will be only as high as these compartments are. So I can take them off and can work on one compartment for the batteries and the other ones will stay closed. Here at the top compartment, I thought, well, this is actually a good solution for all my switching gear. So the idea is to have a BMS for each battery, of course, and also a main switch or a circuit breaker. I will fuse every battery bank separately, of course. And at the moment I'm looking into industrial circuit breakers 80 to 100 amps for each battery bank. And the industrial no arc breakers, they have actually a braking capacity of 25 kilo amps. So this is actually higher than the class T fuses. And I really like the circuit breaker situation far more because it's a two pole circuit breaker. So it isolates your whole battery positive and negative at the same time. In case of a fault, it isolates it. Or if you want to turn it off manually for maintenance or repair or something, testing, it, it disconnects the whole battery on both sides. While a fuse won't. A fuse is only in your positive usually and disconnects only the positive. And then here in the top compartment, what are we going to do here? I would like to have a main switch here, 250 amp circuit breaker switch and isolator for the whole battery cabinet. There are some available from NoArc as well. Not quite cheap, but they also come with an auxiliary switch. So we could potentially connect this to our solar input. So the idea is to have this one here acting like a main switch. It not only connects your whole battery cabinet here, but also disconnects your incoming solar at the same time. Flicking this main switch here will disconnect everything. This is actually not a bad idea. And then the rest of the space here will be other circuit breakers for supplying our solar charge controllers. Well, it's the other way around. And the um, inverters as well. There will be at least one more inverter. At, well, it's a topic for a different video. So all the switch gear, I would like to have in this compartment here, completely next to the battery. We also have the smart shunt in here and potentially also the Raspberry Pi. Well, and then there's the question, how do we connect all these battery banks together and to the main switch here in the upper compartment? At this stage, I've got two possibilities. I can use cables 
35 mil, 25 mil would be all right for 80 amps. So I have to make sure they're all the same length because otherwise we will have different charge and discharge situations for each battery bank. Or I can use a bus bar. Having, having a positive and a negative running from all the way from the bottom to the top of the shelf here and then connect our switch gear up here in the top department. They are not cheap. This is like $100 per meter. Tint copper bus bar. But if I use cables, it will be messy because I have to build loops with cables somewhere and then I have to combine all these cables somewhere in here. So I need a bit of bus bar anyway then. And they are like $60 for three, 400 amps each. And then I need some more bus bars to connect all my other switch gear again. So I'm close to $400 anyway. And then I can take one full length of four meter of bus bar, which I need to purchase apparently to connect all our batteries. So this is my preferred solution at the moment to use um, really a bus bar in here, positive, negative, and then connect our, our main switch and main circuit breaker, fuse, whatever, to the battery here, to the bus bar. And I can isolate them and have one battery bank completely off and the other two are still operational then. I really don't want to bother you too much with all this theoretical stuff now here. I just want to give you a heads up where we are heading to at the moment. Once the gear is arriving, I show you more. We will put this all in, all together, step by step. I think this is a viable solution at the moment for having like 45 kilowatt hours once we have all three batteries here in place. Remember the overall goal is to take parts of the house off grid as well, which we will do very soon. This is what this other box here is for. And also the garage obviously stays off grid here. And I would like to charge the electric vehicle as well from this system then. Yeah, guys, how do we make a battery storage out of a garage shelving? This is the plan. I'm in contact with all these companies, so they are ready to go whenever I am. I do some measuring today and get this all organized. So hopefully we will see the first, the first aluminum panels rocking in next week. And I can also potentially uh, pick up this bus bar in Brisbane end of the week. I'm still undecided what kind of size I want. I probably go for a 30 by 10 or 30 by 12 millimeter, which gives me around 400 amps of carrying capacity then. And this should be around $350 or something for a four meter length. They cut this into pieces, whatever I like. And I get the offcut as well, which we, will, which we then will need for our system up here to connect all the switch gear together. Well, thanks so much, guys. Thanks for listening. It's always good to talk to friends. And I know a lot of you guys have awesome ideas and I want to hear them because there's, there's always room for improvement, right? So thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. Thanks for all the beer donations again. Stay charged and safe. And we shall see us again in the next video coming out very soon. All right, guys. Thanks for watching again. See you then. Bye bye.